Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Um, today will be the first lecture where we will see just the first look at theory of relativity. One particular very narrow aspect of theory of relativity. <coughs> um, this lecture is about time, how we measure time and how the time is measured in different inertial systems. Now, this lecture is part of the course called Relativity for All. It's presented on unisor.com together with two other courses, which are, I would say, prerequisites, Math for Teens and Physics for Teens. Now, um, the whole website is totally free. There are no advertisements, so it's open for everybody. You don't even have to sign in. Uh, however, there are some additional functionalities. Um, which you might be interested in, for example, supervisory study. So, where there is a parent or a supervisor, kind of supervise your flow of uh, educational material which you have to study. Then you do have to sign in and your supervisor as well. Um, also, every uh, lecture has very detailed notes on this website. So, in any way, I just recommend you to watch this lecture from the website and read the notes for every lecture. That would be much more beneficial than if you just found the lecture by itself somewhere on YouTube or wherever. Okay, so let's go back to time. First of all, <coughs> there are a couple of very, very fundamental things which we have to agree, and physicists, based on their theoretical and experimental data obviously agree. These are principle of relativity and constant speed of light in uh, all inertial frames in, let's say, in vacuum. But it, it's in the same kind of category in other media as well, but that's much more difficult, so that's why we're talking about space, vacuum, empty space, and all inertial frames um, have the speed of light exactly the same. That's basically a result of, again, experimental data like uh, michelson moly experiment, which we were talking about before, um, like Maxwell's equation, and some other considerations. Okay, so these are two fundamental things. Speed of light, constant in all the inertial frames in vacuum, and we will deal only with inertial uh, frames in vacuum, and the principle of relativity. Let me just again repeat about principle of relativity. It basically means that there are supposed to be no way you can distinguish um, one inertial system from another. All the laws are supposed to be exactly the same. So if you are immersed in one particular inertial system, there is no experiment which you can make, um, which you can conduct, which would reveal that this particular inertial system is moving with you know, certain speed relative to, let's say, another uh, inertial system. And there is no like one particular inertial system which is um, hooked to our space and it's basically like at rest in the space. Space does not have this type of thing. So every inertial system is exactly the same as another and you cannot distinguish one from another. All the processes are happening in exactly the same way. So if you, let's say, take certain apparatus, build it in one inertial system and it behaves a certain way, it works the same s certain way, then you take this apparatus and you move with this apparatus to another inertial system. It will behave exactly the same thing. There will be no difference in the behavior of this apparatus. If you grow a corn, let's say, in one inertial system, and then you move to another inertial system, which basically has the same um, kind of different uh, well, the same conditions, it's a different system, but the same condition, the same soil, the same um, corn uh, seed, etc., whatever it is. It will grow in exactly the same way, with exactly the same speed. 
regardless of whether one system is moving relative to another or not, or direction of moving, as long as they're all inertial, no difference whatsoever. You will not be able to recognize. Okay, being as it may, um, there is a very important um, time property which we have inherited from the time of Galileo, etc. Um, and uh, I was talking about this time property when I was discussing the Galilean transformation. Namely, time is ab absolute and universal. So if you have two different inertial systems, then the time is exactly the same and uh, there is absolutely no difference if you look from one inertial system onto events in another inertial system, you will see exactly the same thing as if the person who is immersed in that other inertial system sees these same events. And that is something which I'm going to deny today. So the absolute character of time is something which uh, theory of relativity really have uh, put an end to. Time is not absolute. It's not like universal, whatever. So if you see certain event from inside the one inertial system, and you see the same event from another inertial system which moves relative to the first one, <coughs> the timing would be different. Okay, so this is something which, uh, to tell you the truth, I was amazed. Uh, I was amazed myself when I learned about this, and uh, I was probably in school at the time, long, long time ago. I was reading the book. I think it was a book written by Einstein and maybe a rumor or somebody. I don't, don't remember really. And they were basically explaining what I'm going to explain you right now. And uh, it, it seems to be, you know, logically correct. Everything was fine, but as a result, we have come up with this particular difference in um, time variation from different. Um, systems from different inertial systems so I will basically do the same thing it's really simple it's just plain you know algebra if you wish and a little bit of logic what I believe is very important is that um, some people and Einstein definitely was one of them they were thinking much deeper than the rest of us about very simple things time seems to be a simple thing and when you think about this a little deeper and you, you're thinking about certain thought experiments which you can conduct and you see that it's not that simple, I mean, that's the revelation, basically. So that was a revelation for me some time ago and uh, I will attempt to basically uh, convey it to you. Okay, so first of all, what we need is we need some... <coughs> apparatus to measure the time and this apparatus should be you know relatively simple um, and universal applicable to like any inertial frame and here is what what I suggested let's consider you have some kind of a rigid rod made of some metal or whatever it doesn't really matter and on one end you have a source of light. On another end, you have a mirror. Now, what happens is we send a ray of light towards the mirror. Well, we send it everywhere, but one of the rays, exactly one ray, actually reaches the mirror, reflects back and we have some kind of a sensor device here. And the length of this rigid rod is fixed and we can install this particular um, device anywhere and the time between sending 
the ray of light to the mirror and getting it back is our unit of time which we can measure something with so some kind of other events. Now this is event by itself. Sending the ray up and getting it down, that's the event and it has certain time, obviously. And uh, using this unit of time we can measure some other events, but that's besides the point. So we're talking about this particular case. We took this particular device and we have um, this particular uh, kind of uh, device to measure time and to observe it from different standpoints. You can actually imagine like we have some kind of a uh, room or whatever, car, doesn't matter. And we install this device here. So this is the source of light, this is the mirror, and light goes up and then down, and that's the event which we are talking about. Now, let's consider now two different inertial systems. One inertial system is this car, uh, well, let's say standing still, doesn't really matter, but at some particular state. So this is alpha. And uh, the alpha uh, reference frame has certain coordinates. So it's x, y, z, and time t. Now, at some time we have decided to have exactly the same car, but the car will be moving with some speed v. Okay, now this same car represents a different inertial system. So the first inertial system is called A, uh, alpha, when the car stands still, and uh, another system would be beta, and I will use lowercase coordinates, x, y, z, and, and time t, to describe events in that particular system. In this case, it's moving car. Okay. Now, considering the principle of relativity, if we have an, obser an alpha observer, which means observer which is in the system alpha, it sees this event and it has certain time while the ray of light goes up and down. Now, when the car is moving and you see an, a, a, and you take another observer which is local to this moving car, let's call it B ob uh, beta observer, um, it will basically see exactly the same thing, because we know that the principle of relativity uh, sta sta states that uh, all the events are supposed to be exactly the same, which means that the timing of ray going up and down in the moving car for the beta observer who is inside that moving car should be exactly the same as for the alpha observer who was observing that particular event from uh, when the car was standing still. Okay. Now, this speed v is the speed of beta system relative to alpha system. And let's just talk about this thing the following way. So, let's say this is x, y, and z and this is uh, lowercase x, z, and y, this is uppercase. So the whole system is moving only along the x-axis. It just makes my life easier and you will understand it better. So let's just forget about y. Now let's say this distance is r, R. So our uh, source of light is at the origin of this coordinate system, and here and here. Now this one is moving with a speed v, this one is standing still. And let's analyze um, what exactly the alpha observer sees inside 
this car if he can see. I mean, he can analyze it just logically. So, Alpha Observer analyzes how this particular event is occurring in the beta um, reference frame. So, again, we know that Alpha Observer sees within the Alpha system event as such and the beta observer within beta system sees exactly the same thing but i'm talking about cross reference so alpha observer who stands on the ground let's say when the car was on the ground how this particular um, observer sees events in the moving car and how can this particular alpha observer evaluate this event and how long does it take okay so that's the most, most important part so i'm talking about cross evaluation from an observer in one system looking at events in another system from the galilean standpoint from the standpoint of old physics this particular guy should see exactly the same thing um, as the moving, as the beta observer sees inside the car. But, again, if you think about this more thoroughly, you will see that this is not the case. And here is one. Now, what happens? The ray of light starts here, which means at origin. Let's say at some moment we started our experiment, the origin is at point x0. Okay, origin of the beta system relative to the alpha coordinate. So this is x, uh, x0. At this point, we have sent uh, uh, the light everywhere. Now, the light ray, which goes vertically uh, up, would not actually hit the mirror, because during the time it goes up, the mirror will move to the right because the car moves to the right, which means it's not the vertical um, ray which will reach the mirror. It will be the one which is going at some angle. Because by the time we reach the, uh, the, top, of the, the top of the car, the mirror will move here. So it's not this ray, it's this ray will reach and then it will reflect and again it will be here x1 so by the time ray of light would be reflected and um, uh, and, and sensed by the sensor which is here the tra trajectory of the light would be like this not up and down, but at the angle, and then it will reflect at the same angle, and it will be accepted uh, at a further point. So by this time, the ray goes up and down, the whole system, the whole car in this case, will move from x0 to x1. So that would be a new location uh, of, of origin. Now, the light goes with the same speed everywhere, regardless of the speed of inertial system relative to another inertial system. So, it takes time, and by this time, obviously, it's a longer um, trajectory. It's longer than this one, which means there should be a difference in time. So, the event which took certain time, going up and down, for the beta observer, the alpha observer sees it, sees, sees it differently. It sees that the light goes along the longer trajectory. So the same event, which happens with one you know, interval of time, during one interval of time in one system, in this system, in alpha uh, reference frame, takes longer. So local event for the beta observer is shorter by time, going up and down vertically, then the event observed, the same event, but observed by the person who is outside of this particular system.
Well, let's just evaluate how exactly uh, they are related. Now, I'm using these letters to basically um, uh, signify the time in the alpha system and lowercase in the uh, beta system, which is moving. Um, and I will use indices. So, T alpha would be the time uh, for this event for observer in the alpha system of the event which is in the alpha system. So, capital T means that I'm using the observer in this uh, alpha system and the uh, event itself occurs in this alpha system. So, what is my time? My time is um, whenever I go up and down, so R and R divided by the speed. So it's 2R by speed of light. Now, what if I'm in a moving car? I'm using the lower case because it's a beta observer and I am using the event which happens locally in the same. That's exactly the same thing. We are talking about principle of relativity. So these two timings, this is the time uh, of uh, this event going to the mirror and back in the uh, alpha system for the alpha observer and this is event which happens in the beta system for beta observer supposed to be exactly the same what I'm trying to calculate right now is T beta now what is T beta? that's how the alpha observer using, you know, alpha coordinates and alpha time, how it sees event which happens in the beta frame. That's what I would like to understand. So from the perspective of alpha observer, event is going this way and then this way, right? So let's say the time is, or this event is um, capital T beta. Now, what happens during this time? Well, during this time, I know that this is the time the whole system moved to the right with the speed v, which means that my x0, x1 segment equals to speed of moving the car v times my t beta right? Now, let's divide it by 2. Let's call it PQ. Now, obviously, X0, Q, X1 is isosceles triangle. The angle of reflection is the same. So, that's, that's kind of easy. This is R. Now, this is half of this, right? So, the Lengths x0 q x0 q by theorem by Pyth Pythagorean theorem square is equal to r square plus half of that uh, r square plus one half of this segment x0 x1 which is this one so one half of v T beta square. Okay? <coughs> okay. Now, um, the light goes all the way up, this and this. So it covers basically two lengths of this. So if I will have double this length, that would be the trajectory covered by the light during the same time um, capital T beta. So C times capital T beta is the length of this thing. So it's double square root of r square plus one half um, one half v t beta square 
So this is kind of equation, if you wish. So what do we do with this? We don't need this anymore. So we will just square it. So C square T beta square equals 4 R square plus 1 half V T beta square. From this 4 R square equals uh, C T beta square minus this one half square would be 4 and this 4 will be uh, cancelling each other and V square T beta equals C square minus V square T beta simple algebra right okay Now, from this, now this is how our event happens locally. This is local for alpha, this is local for beta, but they are the same because of principle of relativity. So from here, we can see that uh, 2r is equal to c times t beta, from which 4r squared is equal c times lower t beta. So what is lowercase t beta? That's how the event is seen locally by the beta observer. What is capital T beta? That's how exactly the same event in the beta uh, reference frame is evaluated by the person which is in the alpha uh, reference frame. So these things are equal to each other, which means C T beta square, oh, this is square of this, uh, equals C T beta square square minus, well, I can put this here, minus V square T beta square, from which follows uh, that t beta square is equal to t beta square c square divided by c square minus v square but let's just divide it by c square both things and we will see that it will be 1 minus v square divided by c square or let's just get rid of the squares and put square root here and 1 over square root and 1 minus v square over square over c square is traditionally called gamma so t beta is equal gamma t beta so what does it mean? By the way, this is uh, v is obviously much smaller than uh, speed of light, so this is smaller than one. So this is greater than one, which means my capital T beta is always greater than lowercase t beta, which which means that locally event is viewed as a shorter event than 
if you look at the same event from outside from another inertial relative uh, uh, frame, framework. It's called time dilation, basically. There is a term for this, time dilation. Now, this is very important, which means what? The time is not absolute. How I, from the alpha system, see events in the beta system happening is not, this, they, they take not the same time, they take longer. As I see them, they take much longer, well, much or not much, depending on the sp uh, speed v, obviously. The, the, the greater the speed v, the closer this is to 1, um, which means the closer denominator is to 0, which means the greater would be gamma. So as v is increasing, gamma is increasing as well, which means that events from the outsider, events in some particular uh, framework, from outside of that framework, would seem to be taking longer than they, they, than they, they, they seem to be from, from the local guy, whoever is in the beta system itself. That was very important, and that's one of the first things which I personally learned about um, theory of relativity, that the time is not absolute, and um, people are saying that the time goes slower or whatever. I mean, this is kind of a very general kind of description about, uh, about the time. It's much more precise to say the following, that if there is certain event, event is supposed to be taking certain time for a local to this event person. And it takes, for, for, for an observer from the outside, this event takes longer. Basically, that's what it is. Well, um, so time dilation is very important kind of property, and that's one of the first things which you can be introduced in studying theory of relativity. Um, not only the time actually is, um, how should I say, it's subjective. Uh, well, it's subjective because it depends on who exactly is kind of sensing the flow of time. If it's a local guy and the inertial frame is moving, it's one speed, and if it's somebody from outside, look at the events which are happening in this moving, um, moving car or whatever. He sees it differently. Now, but from the symmetrical standpoint, if beta is moving with speed v relative to alpha, it means alpha is moving with speed minus v relative to beta. You can consider beta to be basically stationary, and alpha moving with a speed minus v. And considering we have v square here, it doesn't really matter uh, whether it's plus v or minus v, which direction is moving, it's unidirectional. It all depends only on the absolute value of the speed. So from the observer at beta, if he looks at events which are happening in alpha frame, the result will be the same. From alpha event, it would be for alpha observer event would be shorter than it would be uh, evaluated by the person outside in the beta frame, which means in our equation that would be very similar. But I could I should change beta to alpha and uh, alpha to beta. So if we are talking about alpha event. This is how it, it's viewed by uh, in the alpha observer, and this is how long it takes for an observer from the beta system. The same direction. So alpha sees events, alpha observer sees events in beta system as taking longer than local guy, but the beta observer sees events in alpha system also taking longer than for uh, alpha observer, the local guy. In some way, I mean, it's strange, 
because there is no absolute everything is relative it's not like event really takes longer in one thing than another no event is exactly the same it's just seen longer from the outside than it takes uh, uh, in the according to uh, senses of the local guy in some way it might be you know similar to let's say you have two people looking at each other from a distance each one seems to be smaller than he really is because of perspective right so if you have a and b a looks at b and b kind of seems to be smaller than the real size same thing if b looks at a also smaller but none of them is smaller than another it's just the viewpoint what's important is the viewpoint if you look from the distance it looks smaller that's it if you look here from another inertial system the event takes longer that's it okay um, I do suggest you to read notes for this lecture as I was saying it's on unizor.com the course called relativity for uh, for all and if you will open that menu option uh, you will see the uh, Einstein view onto relativity versus Galilean view which was kind of predates um, okay that's it for today I thank you and uh, I wish you good luck <laughs>